Hi uh, everybody. Uh, I'm just so freaking tired. Um, let's see. Today I just had an exam that I'm just really that I was just stressed about, and I'm still stressing over because I don't know what's gonna happen. Ugh. There is this on a lot of things on my plate, so oh, and so because I'm bored. Stiff, and I don't know what I want to do for the next three hours because they usually hit the sack by like 11:30 or so. So, anyways, because I am bored stiff, let's just jump straight into the next episode, which is, uh, which has rather been known as an episode that really seems to hit hit home with a lot of people, myself included, though. And that episode is Amending Fences. Let's get down to it. So this episode starts out Twilight. What else? Uh, three events in one week, it kind of makes you wonder, oh, oh, okay, I, I see. It was sort of a while, but I basically just remembered now, obviously because of the whole, whole, like, friendship convention and canter law in the episode that I will not mention ever again, and the act visit, I'm sure it's a lot to take in, considering that, uh, you caused two angry mobs and almost caused a war, that's good to know. That's kind of funny, isn't it? And then Spike brings up something that is surprisingly a great callback. What's funny about that? You know, because you used to be famous for being such a bad friend. What are you talking about? I think there's friends in Canada. Come on, Twilight. Look at the wall. Do you see any photos from the four years of Ponyville? And look at you now. The princess is rich. Oh boy, and that is our plot of the episode, because Twilight realizes that, yeah, she used to be a pretty crappy friend when the show started. <gasps> this is a disaster! Well, my old friends. I can't remember any of their names right now. But do you really think that they think I'm a bad friend? Well, well I only meant that she'd come so far. Well, you're a great friend now, and oh, I feel terrible. I've got to make it up to them. Pack a bag, Spike. We're going to Canada. And make a list of my friends' names. Uh, me and my dad and that. I was just gonna say, hey Spike, this is why you need to learn to keep your mouth shut because Twilight will do, go by any extreme necessary to make up, up with whatever she's thinking and thinks of the worst possible scenario. So anyways, after the theme song, Twilight and Spike head back to Canterlot uh, as she starts to explore a lot of her past that's exactly how we left it. <gasps> Look, it's predictions and prophecies, and it's still open to the elements of harmony. And here's that present I was going to give Moon Dancer. Uh, she won't be needing that. Uh, save that for later, because that's actually going to be really important. But, yeah, this episode already seems to am really amaze me, because right off the bat, this episode so first goes to the lanes to show how far Twilight has come all the way back in season one, and which causes Twilight to realize her past mistakes of being a rather crappy friend, and she's actually going willing to go to the lanes to actually use the knowledge she gained to reconnect with her old friends. Right away, this episode impresses me right off the bat. I'm just amazed that when Tyrick attacked ca Canterlot, I'm surprised he didn't destroy a single part of the building. I'm honestly really impressed with that. Come on, Twilight. Princess Celeste gave you an assignment. No point to blame for that. But look at the way I left this place. It's a total mess. Just like how I left my friendship. I've got to make it up to... Yeah, so remember all those background ponies, or rather the three that we saw at the beginning of this series? Those were actually Twilight's good friends. Though, though judging by the way they reacted, I'm surprised that they weren't. But, yeah, and 
Even Moon Dancer was actually one of her friends too. No, and also kind of makes you wonder how a minuet and Lyra can travel back and forth between. But yes. So with this new fan resolved, Twilight decides to make it up to her old friends, and she starts by meeting up with Minuet, who in the fandom is known as Colgate, but I've heard some explanation, but we're just, I'm just going to follow the stories, and I'm going to call her Minuet. <laughs> Surprisingly, she's actually not angry with her. She's actually happy to see Twilight again. Also, I'm kind of surprised that uh, I'm not going to say anything. But yes, as you can plainly see, Minuet is very happy to see Twilight again. And it also kind of makes you wonder, or, what I wonder if she was at Canterlot at her coronation and was probably deep down really happy for her. Yeah, considering how literally over one season ago Twilight didn't know how to fly and she can now do it with no problems whatsoever. It's perfect. I can apologize to all three of them at once. It kind of amazes me how Spike mentions Lyra Heartstrings and actually, spoiler alert, we never see her once throughout the entire episode. But that's just a minor nitpick. So anyways, we... You know, we meet up with Lemon Hearts and Twinkle Shine as they basically reminisce on good times. Old friend Lyra, right? <laughs> she lives in Ponyville, too. We're always over there visiting her. Or she's coming over here. <laughs> oh. Okay, then. So, take... So, I take back my last comment about Lila Heartstrings, and it kind of brings up my point earlier of how Lyra lives in Ponyville, and yet she... But, hey. Hey, if the episode knows how to fix the problems for me... That's another her plus. We thought about asking you to join us from time to time, but we just sort of figured you've moved on. Oh. So what brings you by anyway? Um, time to come back to Kendra like you've never had donuts with us before. Well, uh, you see. I came to apologize. For what? Before I left Canterlot, I didn't really appreciate my friends. And that's because I didn't know how important friendship was. But I've learned so much since I left the Ponyville. I learned what it means to be a good friend. And that I certainly wasn't one to the three of you. But for all the pain I caused you, I am truly sorry. <laughs> The season one, pre the series premiere might have said otherwise, but yeah, apparently despite not being around her friends, her old friends at Candlelight are surprisingly, are taking it pretty well. It's not like we were used to that from you. Yeah, we didn't take it personally, but it's really good to see you now. Well, I hope you have and it's kind of actually kind of how it relates to it now, oh, especially for college students, especially me, because I made a lot of friends throughout how my school career up to high school. I kind of distanced myself with being a few other friends, and nowadays there's just like only a handful of friends that I talk to nowadays, and. I tried to reconnect with some of them over the summer, and it was almost like I got shit-faced on, because I don't know if they have my contact information or just act like they just don't know me, because it's like, like, who is this? And then I always have to put my name in the text to let them know oh, oh, that it's me, and it's like, holy shit, he exists! Like, yeah, it really sucks. Hey, any pony up for a blast from the past? Oh, <gasps> 
So yeah, so before we can continue with Twilight Tri going down memory lane, we should also point out Lemonheart getting her head stuck in the beaker will become a meme. Because of it, because of, because in literally almost every episode, the fandom will always find something that is so funny that it has to be meme-worthy. Alrighty. Unfortunately, during this trip, we find out that actually not all of Twilight's old friends were or actually didn't mind that she left without saying goodbye. Because it turns out that Moon Dancer took her departure, uh... How should I put this? Pretty harshly. Moon Dancer! I remember her! I wonder what she's up to. Yeah, I always liked her. So we just sort of lost touch after you left. Maybe she went to live out by the stadium, didn't she? Well, let's go see. Yeah, so they go to visit Moon Dancer, and as I just said, she takes Moon dancer? What do you want? I'm trying to study. It's done. You're a friend. Ugh. Yeah, she didn't. Yeah, she doesn't take it well. <laughs> That's old moon dancer, all right. She always did like her book. Hey, kind of like you used to be, huh? <laughs> exactly how I used to be. So yes, so Moon Dancer is basically the parallels of current Twilight Sparkle Alicorn of Season 5 looking at Unicorn Season 1 Twilight. And thus Twilight tries to reconnect with her, or basically trying to stalk her. Come on Twilight, we've been watching her for three days. Library house. Library house. That's it. Nobody looks at her or says hello or even gives her a smile. It's like she doesn't even exist. Was she always like this? Story of my life. Well, she always was a little shy, but for a while there she was really starting to come out of her shell. Remember when she threw that party? Oh. Oh, right. I think you might have been busy that day. So, yes, it turns out that the catalyst, the very influence of season premiere, the series premiere, Twilight missing out on Moon Dancer's party, even though that she wanted to basically, she was assigned by Celestia to go to Ponyville to make some friends, it turns out that not going to Moon Dancer's party left some serious repercussions. Moon Dancer is having a little get-together in the West Castle Courtyard. You want to come? Oh, sorry, girls. I got a lot of studying to catch up on. Oh, boy. And judging by the way that at Moon Dancer active right now, you can probably tell that a couple of things. We do find out that because Moon Dancer and Twilight were so similar, they were like the best of friends. So, when Twilight couldn't go to the party, she took it pretty harshly. Thought she might finally be letting her guard down a little with that party. We invited her out a few times after that, but she was always too busy studying. So eventually, we just stopped asking. I had no idea that party was so important to her. Well, in Twilight's defense, she couldn't really help it. I mean, I guess, yeah, it was. Okay, I wouldn't say the first part of it couldn't really defend herself, but at the same time, they, when she got the assignment from Celestia to basically go to Ponyville to make friends, could you honestly really blame Twilight? It almost kind of makes you wonder if Moon Dancer er, and a lot of Twilight's old friends knew that she was Celestia's protege. Hey, some scenes in some probably in later episodes suggest that they might, but this episode implies that they don't. Gotta find a way to make it up to her. So, so she sneaks into the library and basically, and right away Moon Dancer rejects her.
And then, uh, so she keeps asking and asking, and Moon Dancer, of course. Party. You did what? I was so caught up in. Oh, and there's actually in the. Really? Closing a book? I mean, let me see. Uh, how does that seem out of the ordinary when magic exists in Equestria, where magic is pretty much a common thing? Seeing a pony use magic to get into a book is not really something new. I mean, yeah, it is a little bit of a surprise when you turn the page, but it's not anything out of the ordinary. Why won't you leave me alone? I'm trying to study. Oh. I like how that one pony shrugs. She's like, what is she talking about? Oh, I don't have a party. You did what? And I was so caught up in my own study that I didn't take your feelings into account. Look, Twilight Twinkle. Sparkle, whatever. <laughs> I just need to be alone so I can study without some crazy pony trying to make friends. Oh, I mean, I mean, basically, hey, I try to focus on my studies, but they end up procrastinating, and I, I get so freaked out that I have to go downstairs here is just to try to take my mind off by playing video games. At least I can say I'm not shunning on like some other people I know at this college, but I digress. Fine. Wait. How did you get into my book club? Like that? That... I'm wondering, again, if it's even worth asking, because, again, it's a question where magic exists. Hey, Carson, you know Hickard? Of course. He's a genius. I'm sure he's a genius. I have a copy of his treatise on ponies, you know. So, yes. Yeah, so, like I said so, as I said before, because Twilight and Moon Dancer are so similar to each other, they basically bond over knowledge and books and stuff. And she decides to bring Moon Dancer over to an old library. I'm surprised that she wasn't so more mad that she didn't bother to return it. Here it is. I'm surprised that she didn't ask her every day where it was. And again, it still fascinates me how when Tira came to Canterlot that he did not destroy this place. Or even, like, left some kind of rubble behind. I just say cobwebs. Look, I didn't bring you over here for even more poignant reminders of what a bad friend I was. I brought you here to give you this. You can come here whenever you want and study to your heart's content. Yeah, so Twilight, so basically that because Twilight's now pretty much living in Ponyville and obviously doesn't want the library in her old house to basically be a dump, um, she decides to give Moon Dancer the key to basically watch over the stuff and basically read to whatever she feels like. But first, you've got to do something for me. What? Have dinner with our old friends tonight. I can't. I'm reorganizing my biology school. <laughs> uh... Biology almost killed me. I've been spending a lot of time with Minnie at Twinkle Shine and Lemon Heart since I've been back. They really, uh. So they decide to bring Moon Dancer over to dinner, and obviously we get the one scene where, uh, how do I put this? There's a little hidden Easter egg of a certain pony hiding in the background. And if you pause around the 13 minute mark, right as they cut to the diner in, you can look to the left and see a certain some pony watching from behind the background. You can you can probably guess who this is since we're pretty much almost halfway through the season, but uh, but to make sure we actually get through at least to the first half, let's just keep going. So they invite Moon Dancer over to dinner. Science, magic, history, economic pottery, things like that. You planning on being a professor or something? No. Hey, it's pretty much like me, even when it comes to accounting. Seriously, last semester I got like an A in accounting, but it was so freaking stressful I didn't even want to do it because I'm trying to get into the business field of like sales, marketing, promotion, that type of thing. 
So. charge of the Grand Galloping Gala. Uh, also kind of makes you wonder, and they're considering that she would also probably have to do something with Shining Armor and Cadence's wedding. I mean, Twinkle Shine and Minuet were basically either flower girls before they got brainwashed by Chrysalis, but still stands. <laughs> So yeah, it was an awkward dinner. Moon Dancer, you gotta give friendship a chance. Yeah. I gave friendship a chance a long time ago. It didn't work out then, it isn't gonna work out now. Well, yeah, you can probably, it, honestly, I think we're probably at the point of the episode where a lot of people can not only relate to Twilight, but they can also relate to Moon Dancer in a certain way. Because, honestly, there are certain situations where you basically try to let your guard down to try to become friends with somebody or multiple people. And when you find out that someone you thought was a really good friend or you were basically trying to be cool with decide to act like a total jackass for no reason, reason and you feel like they stab you in the back and it almost makes you like you lose trust and almost feel like you can't trust anyone. Because, as I said, last year I've had that personal experience and this semester I've been having the same problems where I've basically been trying to come out of my shell, but there have been certain people here who've been taking the shit on me and obviously I don't take it very well. Because it's like, after what happened last semester, it's like, you're not going to make me look like an asshole on this campus. Been there, done that, you ain't doing it. Twilight? Are you alright? No. No, I'm not. At least she's honest. And because of that, Twilight decided. Where are you going? I don't know, Spike. I really messed this one up. That party was everything to her. I can only imagine what it must have felt like when I didn't show up. Did you know that Twilight is really And we actually. He see how it messed her up. Hey, Moon Dancer! Oh, look at this spread, huh? Thank you so much for coming. Of course. Who so isn't this one of our best friends' parties? Is Twilight coming? Oh, okay. Hey, we'll still have fun, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah, so, as I said, Moon Dancer took it pretty harshly, and from that moment on, it, you know, it could definitely be implied that that, that finding out one of her closest friends didn't come into a party, the one she bonded with the most, just utterly destroyed her socially, and thus, she basically became a shut-in. So the next day, Twilight decides to make it up to it by actually bringing one of her old friends, bring Pinkie Pie over to plan a party, and it seems... Alright. So Twilight decides to throw a party with help from Pinkie Pie, and... It turns out they know each other. Pinky, don't rub salt on the open wound, but she is trying to make it up, and it kind of brings me back to my point earlier. Because it kind of makes you wonder if because Pinkie Pie knows Minuet, 
head, it kind of makes you wonder that Twinkle Star was also part art of the bridesmaids as well. And what did they do to get Moon Dancer's attraction? Basically, leave books out in the form of a trail. I mean, I guess when anyone who is really neurotic can actually find books fascinating, but... But then again, it can pretty much do anything. You could put... I mean, seriously, you could put money on the ground and it would still work. And despite looking at the suspicious trails, she picks up the books. Kind of makes you wonder how many they laid out. Yep, this basically goes to show how far Twilight has come since the series began. Somebody who was so focused on studying that eventually got to make new friends and use the knowledge that she had to try to make up with her old friends. I really love it when this show brings up continuity and makes our grown characters learn something. Makes me happy. Please, you've got to let me make this up to you. Okay. And we are about to get into the big one. I think we can all agree this is probably one of the most emotional scenes the show has ever put out. And a little FYI, my freshman year when I took intro to film class, this scene, this following scene was so good, I actually used it as a project for one of the morals that this episode teaches. Because this is something that not only my, I can identify with what happens next a lot. I... let's do this. And you think this is gonna do it, huh? Uh, yes? Well, sure, why wouldn't it? That was only the first time I ever put myself out there, and then you didn't even bother to show up! Then you left town without saying goodbye, even though we were supposed to be friends. I was humiliated. I felt like I wasn't important. I never wanted to let myself be hurt like that again. Almost the next time I'm, I'm somebody says that MLP is just a little show for little girls. Remember this scene. I think everyone can agree that, including myself, I can identify with this scene a lot. This is basically what I've been referring to before, because I am not the type of person that just hangs out on a daily basis or talk a lot. I'm really reserved, incredibly shy, and I just don't go. Hey. But this year, I've been trying to put myself more out there by bringing my Switch or my PS4 down to the lobby so everybody can try to interact with me. But there have been a couple instances where there have been some people who just took a giant shit on it. it, it pretty much demeaning my value of wanting to try to spend time with people. And it really, really sucks. Huh. And whenever I just feel so hurt and betrayed by those people, I just immediately write them off as an asshole and not even associate with them because they just show me their true colors. There's basically just putting, taking over the time that I put, that I gave thought about and wanted to do over a stupid ass tattoo TV show oh, that missing one episode would be the end of the world. 
it is pretty much the definition of an emotional roller coaster in about 20 to 30 seconds. And Twilight pretty much reaffirms it. What my mistake be the reason you can't be friends with any pony else? We were your friends then, and we'd be honored to be your friends now. And we even find out that had Twilight actually invited a couple of people that had that Moon Dancer knows. Yep, and it's a really heartwarming scene. Even on my Instagram, I talked about of this scene because of how much of a powerful impact it. As I said, and Twilight understands that her actions of saving Equestria can affect others around her. But at the same time, we can also see that Moon Dancer was really trying to put herself out there, and it felt like the biggest betrayal ever. Because reality is. We've all gone through it. Hell, I've been through it between the last three semesters of me being here. And most of my life, for that matter. Well, it was mostly high school, but I digress. And Pinky brought her party cannon. And they pretty much party till the cows come home. So yeah, it turns out that the party was a success, and we see that Moon Dancer becomes actually a bit more more outgoing than before. As she goes to spend time with her, her friends, and the episode ends. And thus, that was the Mending Fences, and... How do I put this? Um, it's one of the best episodes of the series, bar none. I just love, love this episode. Obviously, the biggest factor of this episode is that it's really freaking identifiable for both Twilight and Moon Dancer. It's really also nice that this episode gets called back all the way to the beginning of the series. Basically showing that e that Twilight like, decisions that she made to go to Ponyville suffered some consequences for her old friend. At the same time, though, oh, she basically... At the same time, though, she does try to make up for her mistakes and wanting and to basically... He re he invigorates those friendships. Yes. Yes. There is a lot of funny moments in there, but I think everybody has agreed this episode is very emotional and very relatable because there really really is a lot of moments that many people can relate to. Obviously the party scene was the huge breakdown for everybody. But I think it just goes to show that had had all the friends that you can make now, you can actually learn the knowledge you can use to go back and and basically try to reform those friendships. Yep. And it is possible to learn friendship yep, and keep making new friends, even if some people you thought were friends betrayed you or stabbed you in the back. It's just something that... It's, I just really don't know what else to say. This episode's just really freaking good that it's just hard to explain. I think you probably need to get a full grasp of it by watching the episode yourself, because there's just a lot of things that makes this episode so relatable. Well, it's just so enjoyable to watch. It makes me feel all gushy and happy and also really tear-jerking at most points, especially near the end. So, as a whole, Amending Fences is 
probably an A+, because there are a couple of nitpicks here and there, but none of it really affects the episode overall. Oh, and there really isn't anything too negative I can think about. So yeah, as a whole, I'd say Amending Fences is an A+. Probably one of the best episodes of not only Season 5, but of the series so far. Alright. And I think with that, we are about almost halfway through of Season 5. And the season and the show's already finished with season eight, so I have a lot of catching up to do. But until then, I will see you guys next time. And I think the episode is how many princes dreams sleep. I think there's a little. little quickie. Oh, do princesses dream of magic sheep? Alright, so I'll see you guys then. Bye.